Well, good morning and welcome to episode eight of our new podcast, Next Steps. Uh, part two of episode seven on giving will premiere Thursday at 9 a.m. Uh, this podcast today will conclude, at least for now anyways, our Next Steps uh, uh, podcast as far as what the Lord burdened us to do as far as taking us up through uh, Next Steps going up into vision night. And so we want to hear from you. Uh, we have some ideas if we do continue adjusting things, maybe doing it just you know once or twice a week, um, obviously shorter episodes because we won't have a deadline to get to. And so please let us know uh, any comments, questions, concerns, uh, if you would like us to keep this going and things like that. And then we will spend some time in prayer the rest of this week uh, just to really decide where, where the Lord would lead this uh, continuing going forward. And we'll definitely let everybody know uh, once, we, once we make that decision. But um, uh, again, as we finally have made it, Pastor, to uh, Vision Night, uh, Vision Night is this evening, and we will come out and meet together for the first time in a couple weeks as a church family. And of course, those who can't make it, uh, will, the service will be available online. But to really catch the vision of what the Lord has for our church in 2021, and how we could, as individual members of that church body, uh, be a part of it in serving our Savior. And that is our topic for today, uh, taking our next step in serving our Savior, taking our next step in serving our Savior. And so I'll ask you, Pastor Morales, uh, if you could explain to everybody, because obviously you've been uh, pastoring for a while, uh, what is Vision Night exactly? For those who listening and thinking, well, what does this mean? It's just a Wednesday night service. What's the difference? So I'm, I'm excited to finally be able to uh, get back to in-person services. I'm excited to finally make it to Vision Night. We've uh, obviously rescheduled it now. But Vision Night, when I think of Vision Night, I think of... <laughs> The verse in Proverbs which says where there is no vision the people perish and you know vision is uh, laying out the leading of the Holy Spirit uh, by the pastor the senior pastor of the church for that particular time frame now we you know the, the old saying is if you fail to plan you plan to fail and so it's putting together a plan to say hey this is how we're going to uh, work. This is how we're going to attack the gates of hell. This is how we're going to, for this coming year, this is our plan that, we, that we're going to work. This is what the Lord has given our pastor, and he's going to share that with us uh, tonight, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing what all that is. And so that's, in a nutshell, that's what Vision Night is, a Vision Sunday is, uh, what the Lord has laid, laid rather on the pastor's heart uh, for the plan to serve the Lord for that particular year or time frame. Yeah, absolutely. And, and a chance for us to sit there and, and listen and, and allow the Holy Spirit to work on us uh, as to, to um, where there's needs, maybe where, where I could adjust and help out a little bit more. Um, I know many times I sat in the pews on a vision night and I heard the pastor say something and the Holy Spirit smote my heart. You need to be involved in that. You need to be a part of the solution in that uh, situation, in that ministry right there. And so let me ask you, who should be serving in the true New Testament local church? Well, everybody, every Christian, every born again, biblically baptized uh, member of a true New Testament local church uh, should be active, should be participating, uh, should be doing something. Uh, n not, none of us can do everything, but all of us can do something. And so we should all be doing something for the kingdom of God, uh, for the work of the Lord to continue to move forward uh, so that we can see people saved and uh, the kingdom of God increased. And in Matthew 28, 18, uh, the Bible says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And, and we've talked about these verses numerous times in these podcasts because this is the great, not just the commission, but the great commission. Uh, it is important, uh, not only in its magnitude, it's important in its priority. Uh, it's important to the heart of God, and it should be important to us. We've said it before. Uh, it's the Lord Jesus' last command to his disciples, and it should be our first concern. Uh, he's, he goes on to say, Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Go ye, all of you that are my disciples, that are my followers, you all go and get this job done. I'm leaving you here to, to, to work, not to sit and soak. Yeah, and as we mentioned earlier, he was given the power, he was given the authority, and he's turned around and giving that uh, to uh, the local church. That is the avenue. And again, we know 
Um, you know, you mentioned several times that anyone doing anything in the Lord Jesus Christ's name, we're not to try to stop them. That's not our, our concern. Um, if someone is doing something for the Lord Jesus Christ, God bless them. But but his to be 100% right with God and in his will, his design is to work through a true New Testament local church. So God gets the glory through that. And again, we've been over that several yeah. times. Now, I put down a verse here that I know you're familiar with. And one of my uh, favorite messages that I've heard you preach comes uh, from this text right here. And so if you don't mind uh, not only reading that for us, but kind of giving us a little uh, context on that, we'd love that, Pastor Morales. Sure. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, the first two verses of that chapter, the Apostle Paul writing to the church at Corinth by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he said, so this is God speaking. Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ, ministers and stewards of the mysteries of God. So again, we've talked about everything belongs to God by ownership, uh, but he entrusts us with everything by stewardship. And so every single one of us is a minister, not just the pastor, not just the evangelist, not just the missionary, not just the preacher, but every born again believer is a minister. Uh, and verse two says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. And so God expects us to be faithful stewards. And, and that basically is synonymous with a minister. A faithful steward is a minister of the the mysteries of God, the resources of God, the word of God, uh, the work of God. And so every last one of us is a minister. Uh, and that word minister, you referenced the message that I preached from that particular passage, that word minister uh, is translated, uh, it's a word that, that basically means under rowers. And under rowers were uh, people who were slaves, uh, that they would be used in, in galley ships. Uh, they would be rowing, they would be chained to, to this this oar and all these the galley ships that had different oars that would propel the ship forward. Uh, and so that's that's the concept, that's the connotation that it's talking about. It's everyone pulling in the same direction, uh, everyone pulling uh, to move the ship forward. Uh, and we are the slaves of Christ. We're his bond servants. And so we are we are to be chained to the work, chained to the to the uh, the local church, the institution. Uh, and everyone pulling, everyone, not us, you know, one person pushing, the other one pulling, uh, but all of us pulling and rowing at the same time to propel the work of God forward. That's what this, this passage is, is uh, referring to. Yeah, and that's absolutely great. And, it, and it's such a good point because, you know, many times we hear the word minister and we just think of the preacher, the pastor. And, or, or you know, in the, in the illustration of the ship, you would think, well, okay, the minister is the captain of the ship, or the minister is the guy that, you know, bangs the drum to keep everybody in line even. No, no, no. The minister is the one rowing the ship. And that's each and every one of us. Uh, you know, us being in ministry, even Pastor Mix, you know, is, is, is one of the hardest working pastors I know. He doesn't just study and preach. He's he's a minister. He's serving. He's, he's, he's uh, you know, caring for the souls of the people that God has entrusted to him. And so that that's for everybody, just like the Great Commission is for everybody. Now, again, it might be through the local church, but it's for each and every Christian. And again, our, our roles change over time, and that's okay, but we all should be, do, like you said, you know, we, we can't all do everything, but we could all do something. Um, and so I have here Ephesians chapter 4, and again, we've gone over this again, and there's a reason, there's a theme going through here, uh, because it all ties together. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12 says, And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting or the maturing of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying or the building of the body of Christ. And so, yes, God gave as a gift to this local church ministers that are able to then turn around and mature every born-again believer that is in the church to do so, uh, or, or you know, do, do so, and so, so all of us could then together perform the work of the ministry from top to bottom, A to Z, everything that needs to be done for the edifying or the building up or the adding on to, and also, you know, bringing up our own uh, levels of maturity to be able to be used more, to be able to do more for the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's really the point of uh, all of it, really, as a local church. And so who should be serving? Well, every single person. Now, we understand, you know, people are going to be at all different levels, and that's okay. Um, 
but but it's important for us to realize that the who and who should be serving is every single person uh, that's a member of that church. Uh, the next thing I would ask you is how should we or how can we serve? Well, the, the very first thing we, we should be doing is uh, being faithful to the services. That's number one. Uh, obviously, and we've talked about these various steps, mm -hmm. salvation, baptism, church membership, uh, 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 discipleship, uh, giving, soul winning, all these various uh, steps. We should be trying to do better in each and every one of those steps. If if we're we're in one level, let's you know let's try to get to the next level. But uh, attending uh, and being there, being a part, that's that's tremendous. And and then God gives each and every one of us gifts. He gives us giftings, and and in within that body, you know, there's certain people that are really good uh, with. Their voices, they can sing really well, or they can speak or teach really well. There are other people that are very good with planning and or organizing and, and orchestrating things. Uh, there's other people that are very good at just uh, loving on folks and, and being an encouragement. There's so many different avenues where we can serve God through the local church. Everyone has some gift. Uh, some have more than others, but everyone has at least one, and we should all be using that gift not only to, to better ourselves personally, but also to better the, the work of God through the local church. So we should all be contributing in that way. Yeah, and that's so true, and I see it in my own life. I was first sitting there, and, and that was a, that, that's a good ministry. Again, anyone who's, who's in a position of authority in a church, whether they be a full-time you know, pastor or just a, a layman that's serving, will understand the benefit of having people there that are faithful to the activities and the services of the church. And, and your job, that's your job to be an encouragement, to be a blessing, but just also to be there learning. That's your first ministry. And then once you once you do that, you know, the Lord will take you and grow you and mature you. And again, you should constantly be going forward. And again, when I look back on my, my Christian life, I see that. Uh, and so, so you mentioned some uh, different gifting and things like that. And so I mentioned a couple of days ago, we were going to come back to the Romans chapter 12 to talk about the spiritual gifts that are, are still active in the church today. And so in, in Romans chapter 12, verse 6 through 8, we're going to read and talk about these gifts. Now, every single born-again believer has been given at least one of these gifts. Uh, and I know with myself, there was some that came natural to me. But as I've grown, as I've matured, as I've surrendered to the Lord and allowed him to use me, he's gifted me in, in, in other ways that I wasn't at. But there's still some that I'm not that good at. That's why he builds his church in such a way that we're, you know, we're there to pick up each other's slack you know, my strength might be your weakness and vice versa. And so in verse 6, he says, having the gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. So we have different gifts according to the grace. that is, they're, they're all gifts. They've been given to us. And, and we, know, we shouldn't be envious of somebody else's gift because that's their gift. I have my own. And we just need to kind of stay in our lanes and support each other and help. He says, to us, whether prophecy, and this is talking about preaching the word of God, not uh, you know foretelling uh, you know the word prophecy means has different meanings. This is talking about preaching, and again, not not just preaching in front of hundred people be, behind the pulpit, but also uh, one on one on on the street or on a couch. And so, if you have the gift of being a soul winner or standing up and preaching, it says, "Let us prophesy or let us preach according to the proportion of faith." Verse seven says, "Or ministry." or serving, we would say. Some people, they're just natural servers. It, it comes natural to them, and you'll know it. You'll see at a fellowship, you know, there's, it's time to clean up, and they're jumping up, and they're ready to go with it. That's a gift. Not everybody has that gift, but it's just as valuable. It's just as important as the gift of preaching. And it says, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering. And so you see the gift of preaching. You see the gift of serving. Um, it goes on to say, he that teacheth, I'm teaching. Again, that's a gift. Some people are natural born teachers and they have that gift. And, and if you have that gift, uh, or if you're, let's say you're even a, you know, a teacher, or that's your profession, you know, then we should use all the gifts that God has given us for God's glory. Not that we can't do other things as well, but, but, you know, there's many, many classes that, that either can use help or, um, could be started if we had more, more laborers for the harvest. And it goes on to say, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, that's an encourager. And again, if, if somebody's in their place, if we just had a really good crowd at, at most services, that's an encouragement to, 
to the pastor or the teacher of that class. That's a good starting point ministry. But some people, it's just natural uh, to send a text, to send a card, to a handwritten note, you know, let everybody know you, you, you know, that you love them and you're praying for them. You know, if you're an encourager, boy, do we need encouragement. Boy, boy does our pastor need encouragement. And so if you have that gift, encourage people be be a blessing in that way we have a ministry um of people that that will send out cards and notes and letters like that and be a part of that jump on in it goes on to say he that giveth let him do it with simplicity again we all should be tithing as we talked about and and, and the next half of that is on offerings above tithe that just comes more natural to some people they're natural givers and not only of their of their finances but also of their time and things like that some people kind of are, are more secluded with their, with their personal lives, but others are. They're givers. They want to be a part of it. They want to be a, a blessing and help, and, and, and it's needed in the church. If you have that gift, uh, please use it. And again, it's, it's all, all of these things are, if you look at all the ministries of the church, and, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, but you're going to see all of these gifts that are needed on display. He that ruleth, uh, to do so with diligence. That's the, the, the gift of organization or leadership, and, and Pastor, you mentioned that a minute ago. You know, some people, again, it's not everybody can be, nor not everybody should be a leader, and that's okay. You know, we need just as many, you know, it, it, every leader needs followers, right? We can't all be leaders, uh, but if you are a leader, you know, boy, we could always sure use some more leaders to step up and say, hey, you know what, I might not be able to teach, but I could organize, I could, I could structure some things, I could help with that scheduling process, and that's needed, that's important. And he says, it says, do it with diligence. And so be very diligent about that. And then he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. And what a gift that is. That, that is one that I definitely do not have. But the gift of mercy, you know, um, to, to just be there alongside somebody that's going through something and, and, to, and to love on them and care on them. Not that I don't have that uh, as far as loving and caring on them. I just, I don't do well in tough situations. I'm the guy at the funeral that's cracking jokes and things like that because I don't know how to deal with those kind of situations. Um, but, but, but the point is, not all of us are good at all of these things, but all of us together, because God has built this church and, and, and is bringing people in, could fill all of these voids through the ministries. And then, Pastor, if you don't mind kind of taking us through different ways that people could serve uh, in our church. Well, there's so many ways we can use that God has given us at First Baptist Church of Kingstown, or if you're listening and you're not a you're not connected to First Baptist Church of Kingstown, whatever church you are connected to, uh, there's so many different ways. Uh, there's of course teaching. Uh, there's of course uh, nursery. Uh, there's choir. There's special music. Uh, there's so many different ways. Uh, helpers in classes. Uh, we we have of course the Awana program. You know they're they're always being helped there. Uh, you talk about the children's Sunday school, there always, there's always a need for help there. Uh, organizing, decorating, uh, so many different ways that you can participate. And there's something for everyone, something, someplace, somewhere where we can all serve. Man, find your spot. And I tell people, too, well, I don't know what God has gifted me, or I don't know how God has, you know, uh, is leading me. Well, you know, do something. Do something. You can't steer a parked car. Uh, you got to move forward. And God, he hits moving targets. And so if, if you get busy, God will lead you. God will direct you. Confirm where it is he's given you. Amen. Absolutely. And, and I would say, um, you know, if, if you look at the ministries that we currently have and you say there's nothing for me currently here, well, come to Vision Night or, or come and listen to Vision Night because you're going to hear um, you know, whether you're online watching it or, or, or in person, uh, you're going to hear the vision of all the things that we are starting um, and, and all the things that we're going to be or, or the Lord has led our pastor to want to start and, and allow the Holy Spirit to work on you. Maybe you could be a part of that. And, and if you're to a point where you don't know where you're gifted at, uh, I know Pastor Nix has a spiritual gifting test that he can go through. He has a couple of them, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Again, most kind of, you kind of have an idea of, of where you're a little bit more gifted, but, but to, to find out a little bit more detail, there's nothing wrong with that. And I always tell everybody this, Pastor, and I know you'll like this one. I say, if there's, a, if there's uh, something that you want to do, a ministry that you want to do that we're not doing, you come and tell us about it, and we'll, we'll create that ministry for you. We'll, we'll, we'll find a place for you, right? Amen to that. Uh, as uh, I, I like to say, a need seen is an assignment given. And uh, so if you see a need of an area or a ministry that the church doesn't have or it's weak in, then by all means, 
uh, let's either get it started or let's ramp it up or let's make it better. But, hey, we need the manpower. Uh, and so we need uh, men, women, boys, and girls to, to be involved in as many parts of the ministry as they possibly can. Amen. That's good. And then, of course, lastly, we get to our, our concluding here uh, with what we always talk about, the application of why should we serve. And then, so we will, there's obviously many reasons. We're going to talk about three today. So, Pastor, why should we serve? Number one, it's commanded for Jesus Christ to go. Um, the Lord Jesus Christ didn't say, you know, P-R-A-Y, pray. You know, he, he didn't say G-I-B-E, although those were parts of, of our service to God, praying and giving. Uh, but he did say go, and that's that's a physical aspect. That's something you do physically. And so we are to go. We are to get involved. We, we mentioned it in the prior podcast. The Lord Jesus Christ did not command us to throw up a sign, throw up a building, and put on that sign, hey, we got the gospel, we got the good news, y'all come in here. That, and we do some of that, right? We do some signage and we do some images through signs, but that's not the, the, the command that he gave us. He, he told us to go, go get them, go after them and, and do your part. And so we, we got to all, we're all commanded to serve. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and again, you know, we have to realize um, doing, you know, sinning isn't just doing wrong. It's not doing right when, we're, when we know we're supposed to. Uh, we won't take the time to go through the book of Romans chapter 6, but a lot of it deals with us basically choosing because God is so gracious that he saves us. He, you know, he gives us an opportunity for salvation, but he doesn't force anybody to take it. And then once we get saved, he's so gracious that he doesn't force anybody to serve him. Now, we should all serve him. And, and, and you know, again, like we talked about the other day, if I, was, if I was God, I would make everybody serve me for what I did for them. But he doesn't. He gives us a choice. But Romans chapter 6 makes it very clear that if we, we have a choice to make, we're either serving sin or we're serving God. And so by not serving God, essentially, we're serving sin. And it's a, it's a, if we're not serving the Lord, we're choosing not to do right then we're sinning, and we're sinning against the Lord our, himself. That's correct. And it's called the sin of omission, right? Mm -hmm. Not doing what we're supposed to do. That's omitting something. Uh, like we talked about in Matthew 23, 23, the Lord, and we were talking, you know, and it is for today. And he said, you, you've tithed of your men, your anise, and your cumin, but you've omitted, you've omitted the weightier matters. Mm -hmm. He says, so don't omit that. Hey, keep doing that, but also add to that this. And so we do commit sins of omission. And when we don't serve, see, Christianity is participation sport, so to speak. You know, there's not to be anyone sitting on the sideline. There's not to be anyone sitting on the bench. Uh, we should all be in the game. We should all be active and participating. Some will be more active. Uh, some people's roles are more visible. Some people's roles are more time-consuming. Uh, some people's roles uh, require more time or more uh, effort. But every single one of us has a part to play. So let's give up this fault. Yeah, and, and I always say, you know, the person working in the nursery is just as important as the person behind the pulpit preaching. Because if there's kids crying in the service, nobody's hearing the gospel being preached. Amen. And so, and so it's important that we realize that. Um, so, so the next thing that we would, what we're going to discuss here is um, in, in dealing with the, the, the idea of why should we serve is that, that essentially this is why we're still here, right? We believe, obviously, in the, in the pre-tribulation rapture, very clear in Scripture. And again, we're not going to go uh, down that rabbit hole, this, this, this podcast. Um, but, but there's a reason why we're not raptured uh, immediately on salvation to go be with the Lord, right? This is why we're still here. First uh, Peter chapter two verse five says, "Ye also, as lively or living stones, are built up a spiritual house." Talking about us being built up into the church house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Now, of course, we know that the sacrificial uh, part, the sacrificial system of the law, has been abolished right upon Jesus's ultimate sacrifice. Um, but, but we're talking about offering spiritual sacrifice. That means of us giving to be able to reach others and reproduce ourselves as Christians. And it says that this, this sacrifice is, is, is acceptable to God uh, by Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah, and again, along the same lines, we're still here to serve. We're still here to work. We're still here to reach people. Uh, 1 Peter, rather, chapter 2 and verse 9 says, But ye are a chosen generation 
a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people. And again, that doesn't mean that we have one blue eye and one green eye, although some people can be weird like that. But that's not what it's talking about. We're, we're chosen. We're called out that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We've been called out of the world. We're still in the world in order to reach the world for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, that, that's really good. And it's, it's, it's spot on, right? That, that's, that's what we're here for. That's why we're still here. Uh, in Romans chapter 15, as Paul is um, getting ready to, to explain exactly what he's going to be doing in his ministry, um, as well as then listing a bunch of people that have helped him and are going to help him in his ministry because it's a team sport, right? It's a participation sport. It's also a team sport, you know. Um, but in Romans chapter 15, verse 16, he says that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. He was the apostle to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. And so that, that's what he's saying, yes, I'm an apostle. Yes, I went around and preached the gospel and started churches and, and all of these good things. But essentially, my ministry was to, to, to share the gospel that, that the, those that have trusted Christ, the souls that are now going to be in heaven, I'm offering them up. Uh, that they might be acceptable and sanctified by the Lord, by the Holy Spirit. And so that's really our goal. All of it has to do, and, and, it, and it just keeps on going around and around in the circle of the Great Commission of, of getting people saved, baptized, and then discipled. Sunday school classes, uh, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday, all of that is, is part of the discipleship and the maturation process. And then lastly, I'll ask you, uh, what is the third reason that we're going to talk about today of why we should serve? Well, the Lord will bless us, bless our obedience, and we should obey in order to be blessed, and we're not guaranteed blessing when we obey, but man, it sure it has proven itself true in my life, and I'm sure, Pastor Tuglio, you can say the same, that when I'm obedient to the Lord, when I do what he has asked me to do, man, ultimately, that's the greatest blessing because then I'm in his will. Uh, then I have his provision, I have his protection, I have his uh, his divine uh, healing, and just just his constant blessing on my life. Now, that doesn't mean that we have problems, that doesn't mean we have struggles and, and trials and tribulations, because obviously we're going to have that. But overall, the overarching theme of our life is God's hand is on our life when we submit to him. And he, he blesses us in ways that we couldn't even imagine. Yeah, and I would add, um, you know, it's not just doing right, but it's doing right with the proper motive. And so again, if we're doing it just to try, you know, if we're giving just to get, like, oh, I got, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, give this five dollar offering because then God's gonna give me more. That's not the proper motive, and you won't get blessed yeah. for that. I remember when we first had the conversation where you explained to me uh, about these verses that you're about to read here in Matthew, as well as uh, in First Corinthians and I believe Second Corinthians two, dealing with the bema seat or the judgment seat of Christ. I was like, oh, upset. I'm like, I don't want nothing. I don't deserve anything. I don't even deserve salvation. But that's how great our God is, right? He doesn't. He doesn't owe us anything. But he he says, hey, if you're if you're obedient, I'm gonna bless you. I'm gonna I'll give you in every aspect. Well, not only does that magnify His grace and His mercy and His His generosity, His generosity, He also knows that we're made of you know dust and ashes, and we're just we're we're but He knows how we what makes us tick. He knows what makes us uh, go. Puts that carrot out in front of us saying, hey, I know this will motivate you if I bless you, if I provide for you, if I protect you, if I if I heal you, and all these, these various blessings that we receive. But Matthew 6, 19 and 20 uh, and 21, these, these are passages telling us what we should be focused on as Christians, what we should be investing our life in. It says, lay not up for yourselves treasures of where moth and rust doth corrupt, where thieves break and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God is teaching us that if we invest only in this life, only in this existence, it'll 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 come to nothing. It'll rust away. It'll disappear. But if we invest in eternity, if we invest in the kingdom of God, if we invest in the the souls of men, women, boys, and girls, man, that's something that will last forever. 
And so that's what we need to be focused on, investing in eternity. Yeah, absolutely. I always tell people, do you want to work hard and, and, and get something that's going to last 20, 30, 40, 50 years? Or do you want to work hard for something that, that will last for eternity? You know, an endless amount of time. And, and so I love I love First Corinthians 15 in, in general. It's a great chapter. But as, it, as he closes that chapter, he goes through, and this is where he's talking about the rapture, and he's talking about how, how death has no sting, you know, and that, that we have victory through Jesus Christ, that we don't even have to fear death because we're going to be in heaven uh, to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. And then here we go on verse, in verse 58, he kind of sums it all up. Therefore, because of all that, that that he just got done talking about, you know, about going to heaven and getting raptured and, and, and having a glorified body and having victory in Christ. Therefore, because of that, my beloved brethren, my brothers and sisters in Christ, he's talking about born-again believers here, to, to be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You know, it's not in vain. There is nothing, and trust me, I, I was 31 years old when I got saved, and, and I had a bunch of stuff that the world said I needed to have to make me happy, and it made me miserable. And I've been laboring for the Lord ever since, and I've been giving and giving and giving more of the earthly stuff uh, for the spiritual, and, and, it, and it already isn't in vain. It's not in vain already, and it, and it won't be. There's no investment we can make for eternity that's going to come back void. Amen. Pastor Sublio, I love passage i love that verse again god knows how we are and we can get discouraged so easily if we don't see the fruit right away if we don't see the results right away and he says you know what just in there stay with me uh, I, I love um, first corinthians chapter two uh where he says i have not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things that god has prepared for them that love him the blessings that he tells us about in the bible uh, they're wonderful, they're great, but there's so much more that we can't even fathom. We can't even wrap our minds around that he has to offer us, that he has to show us and bless us with in eternity. It's worth it to serve the Lord. It's worth it. Uh, and so as we close this particular podcast or this series of podcasts uh, on serving the Lord, I want to mention something that's very important. Serving God does not deliver us from problems and trials. As a matter of fact, Joshua, who led the children of Israel into the promised land in Canaan, uh, he said to them, as they had challenges before them, they had fights and battles and wars and, and all kinds of struggles in order to capture the land and, and, and dwell in the land that was a great land, a land with milk and honey. Some of them were discouraged. Some of them were afraid. Some of them were uh, maybe even apprehensive. And he says to them in Joshua chapter 24, uh, verse number 15, we know the verse. He said, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. He says, hey, decide, make a decision. You, you can go back, go back to Egypt, <laughs> go, uh, go back across the Jordan River and, and go back to that. Or you can serve the gods of these foreigners here in this land that we're supposed to oust. He says at the end of that verse, he says, but for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He says, I'm choosing this day. I'm deciding that no matter what happens, no matter how hard it gets, no matter how difficult it is, it is worth, it is worth it to serve the Lord. So, so Christian, uh, if you're listening, Captain, I'm telling you, Pastor Sulio and I both are, are in agreement that it is far the best life that you can live. I've lived for the Lord Jesus Christ, serving and obeying and doing work for him, local church. Absolutely. You will never, never, ever regret doing something for the Lord. And as I've said several times, if it was good enough for the Lord Jesus Christ, who, who gave up heaven, left all that to come here and go through what he went through, to, to die for me, to save my soul. If he died for me, I'll live for him. And so if it was good enough for him, then it's good enough for me. Hey Amen. I like that. I'm glad that you've uh, shared that that quote with us several times, Pastor Sudio. Thank you so much. It reminds me of your your uh, license plate train that you had on your truck in Orlando, Florida, when I first met you. Uh, and, and said just that, if 
he died for me, then I'll live for him. I love that. And so, Christian, let's make let's make sure we do our part. We'll see you tonight, hopefully, Lord willing, at Vision Night. Thank you for uh, listening to these podcasts. Again, we hope they've been a blessing to you. Pastor Suglio and I are, are available. If we can help you in any way, don't hesitate to contact us. Bless you guys.